All right. <laughs> so this is a super fun painting. And if you see my examples, I'm doing a balancing act. It's actually three paintings, but that's to just show the different variations that you can do with this painting. And I'm going to let you have a choice. I remember growing up having those choice books where you get to like choose the ending. So this is, this is your choice painting. You're going to choose the ending. You're going to choose your combination of colors. Or if you even have some different colors that you want to do, I will show you how to do that. But it's going to be the same technique, same method in order to get all of these same ones in. So what your first I want you to think about is I want you to choose a background color in your map, in your mind. So for all three of my examples, it looks like in our, in our head, it's just red, blue, and yellow. But really there's actually, it's more of a orangey yellow. I kind of did a, a teal blue and I did that red, but I added some darker parts to it. So whatever color, it's not just gonna be the straight color, we're gonna still do a mix to give it some, some uh, variation of the color. And then we'll put in the shape of the coffee cup. And then you will be able to color the coffee cup. So a lot of times it does help to have some nice contrasting colors. Contrasting are where there are, they're not directly beside each other on the color wheel, they're kind of a little apart. And all of our primary colors are kind of a triad of colors on the color wheel. So that's why they can blend. I think the only other combination I could have done is maybe a teal with a yellow cup. I think I could have done that one. I don't know. There's lots of different ones. I guess I could do um, a yellow one with a red cup. So there's, there's some different ways that you can do it. So I'm going to let you choose. And I haven't even figured out what I one so i'll just figure that along, out along the way so we'll need our normal um materials so i've got my plate ready we're going to be using since my uh canvas is just a little eight by ten size i'm going to use just more of a medium flat brush to get my background in that's going to give me lots of little uh, motion with my paintbrush if you're doing a larger brush a larger canvas then a larger brush could be helpful if you're trying to cover more surface. And um, even then, if you did a larger canvas, having a medium brush uh, to do the coffee cup, and then we'll also have a round brush. So those are our basic brushes. We've, we've used these a lot of times. Um, later on, I may even pull out a really, really skinny, skinny, skinny paintbrush for those um, the little steam swirls. So. That'll be it. We've got our water right here. The not drinking water. This is our paint water. I've got other water for drinking later. And then we've got our colors. So I'm still going to be pulling from our basic colors, our red, yellow, blue, black, white. All of these paintings were made the same, same way using those colors. It just depended on which color I decided to do as the background versus the coffee cup. So Let's see here. I think I am going to do a red background for my demonstration, but I'm also going to pull an extra canvas out um, just to be able to demonstrate. Wait, let's see. To demonstrate some different other colors. So let's see if I can. I hate the plastic on some of these, don't you? These new canvases. Just try to do those ahead of time. So I'll go ahead, um, since this is the first time I'm trying to demonstrate multiple colors as background, I'll have this over to the side and maybe I'll be able to demonstrate just a couple of extra colors while we're going through. But for me, I, since I'm going to do red, I'm going to go ahead and put out some red on my plate. If you've chosen blue, this is the time for you to put out blue. If you've chosen yellow, this is the time for you to put out yellow. If you own purple and you want to do purple, this is the time to pull out your purple. Um, so I'm going to do red and actually I'm going to pull out a little bit of blue. If I'm doing this red one, I would like to have some darker parts of red and pulling in a little bit of blue is how I'm going to get darker. Now, if you're going for that teal color, that teal color is a lot of blue 
with a little bit of yellow. So I'm going to go ahead and put out some yellow so I can use that. If you're going for the yellow, we're going to do yellow with a little bit of red. Do you see, see how each, each color, each of our colors is going to actually have just a little bit of the other to give it some variance, right? So we're not going to actually need any white right now or black. So we've just got our three primary colors. Again, if you had something that you already own that we're not using, maybe you have um, a bottle of green or purple, which are colors we can mix, although the purple is a lot harder, but you want to use that, then you can, you can pull from that. So like I said, for my background, I'm gonna demonstrate a red, I want to do a red C. Now I have to try to choose two, and that's really tough. Oh wait, we've got some friends joining. They're joining a little late, but they're just in time still. All right. Well, I am ready to get this started. I've got my brush. We've got our brushes ready, and our brush never likes to start out dry. They always want to make sure that they are nice and moist. So we get our water. We dip it in the water. We drag off the edge, your favorite paint cup that's got lots of paint love. We get that ready. And I said I was gonna demonstrate the red. Do I wanna do the red? I really love the teal. I think, I think I'm going for the teal. It's just my favorite one, <laughs> but it's the same technique. It's the same thing. And I'll, I will show you on the other. So for the, the teal, I really like the teal uh, color. So it's a blue, so I'm gonna grab blue. And I did decide to go with a little bit bigger brush just so that I can go faster in demonstration. And then I'm gonna grab a little bit of yellow. So that's my teal color. And this background is just gonna be a kind of a crisscross kind of motion like this. So it's just going kind of crisscross and covering, covering the background. Ooh, and I just sprayed a bunch of paint all on me. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, that can happen. Oh well. That's when I should remember to grab an apron. So as I'm going, I'm going to just see the colors. Maybe I got a little too much yellow on that one for me and I'm gonna grab some more, some more. But I am just going to do my whole background. It's always, it's, it's like I'm doing X's the whole time. X, 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 right? Just doing a crisscross of that color. How do you make teal again? So the teal, this teal color is mainly blue with a little bit, it's a little bit of yellow. That little bit of yellow. So blue right? teal? Honestly, I can't, I do see where I probably should have put out a little bit of white because this is a very dark color. I can add a little white right now to kind of lighten that, lighten that up some. So for the red, what, what else would you have together with the red? Yep, for the red, yep, let me demonstrate that. The red, I would probably have a little bit of the, uh, again, our white can be out. Let me get this. So the red, I'm gonna do red right here. Maybe a little bit. Maybe a little bit of white. So I'm gonna do red, but then I'll actually grab just a touch, just a tiny touch of the blue. And that makes it kind of a kind of darker red in areas. Right? I have still a little bit too much blue on my brush from when I was doing that teal. But I'm going back and forth. And you can just kind of go as the color that you really like that comes out. You can go, ooh, I really like that one. And if you want it lighter, um, you can even add for the red. You can kind of even shift it a little bit to the orange by adding a little yellow if you wanted. Yeah, that's you probably kind of orange. you can kind of make it more of an orangey red by adding a little yellow to it, right? So then I can start to see where it's darker versus lighter. 
And then with that yellow, that yellow is so pretty, you know, I might come in here. I'm going to use this corner right here to demonstrate the yellow. So maybe I'll do yellow right there, actually with a little bit of white, because sometimes that will spread it out, right? I'll do that yellow, and then maybe, maybe just that little touch of red to kind of give it some, some orangey yellow to it. See? So now I can, can you see in the, co the corner of this where I kind of, we kind of did a darker, above the coffee mug, I tried to make the corner of the color a little darker, right? And then as it went on, it went a little lighter, and that's when you can add, you can add some lighter, lighter color to it, adding some white. So you can see how, and then I like, I like seeing all the different little lines. I don't make it completely blended. It's just enough to cover the whole canvas. So I'm going to really, really rinse out because I've got so many different colors now on my brush. Like I said, this is going to be a little different having me show and demonstrate three different ideas at the same time, but I think we're doing it. I think we're doing it and you guys are hanging with me fine. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. So let me see if I can get this, my teal worked in here. Um, and again, like I said, I did end up going ahead and grabbing some white to kind of lighten that up as I went over here. So I'm grabbing, for me, I'm grabbing blue and yellow and then a little bit of white. And then I'm just blending that in, blending that in, crisscrossing. If I see it's a little too much yellow, I just grab some more of the blue. We're just all getting our background colors in. Um, also, this is the time where going ahead and doing the edge in the same color that you're doing your background in. While it's already on our brush, um, look at me, I'm already having to grab some more blue. Um, while it's already on our brush, it's a lot easier to go ahead and get that blended in. So I can come right here. Get that whole edge of my canvas in. So part of it is just grabbing the colors that you're doing, right? And then just getting that in. So yeah, for me, I'm grabbing blue with a little touch of yellow. Like I said, I like seeing these little crisscross lines, the brush strokes. That's what kind of makes it look interesting. Something gets too dark, you can add a little bit of white. If it gets too light, you can add some more of the dark. This is, this is a great, great exercise in blending our colors, right? Because you're getting to choose your color. Well, can you, can you blend the color that you made? Now again, if yours ends up being all one solid color, that is fine. It's fine, you chose the color. It can be however you want it to be. I've got a couple of little swirls of green sometimes. <coughs> Bless you. <laughs> so yeah, so I'm going to, I'm going to continue with, well, I've got the colors getting all the way on my edge, all the way around my canvas. And that's also going to give me some time for the main part of my canvas to, uh, to dry. We are going to need this, need this to get a little more dry before we can move on to the next part. So I'll just take the time, finish this out. I promise I used to do the paintings and then I would try to do the edge afterwards and that is the worst because if your paintbrush slips and it goes onto the front of the canvas, your finished painting, oh my gosh, that was just, 
that was the worst. And you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. Oh, I had my heart sink a couple times. Just grabbing, grabbing, going, going. I can't wait to see what colors everyone chose because there were options. I like options. Hopefully not too many options that made it hard for you to choose, but just enough that you get to choose maybe your favorite color today. I don't like that. So as you can see on mine, I have it where it's uh, a little bit darker. Oh. A little darker up at the top, right? And then it kind of gets gets a little bit lighter. So maybe I can even brush in a little bit, a little bit of, of lighter streaks right there. But I like I like where it's different, different shades of that same color between darker and lighter. Go. Alright, so I'm going to rinse, 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 rinse out my brush very well. Maybe work on the couple of spots of paint that ended up on my arm. <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, well. So maybe you did, maybe you did all of that yellow with a little bit of orange in it. Maybe you did that red on yours, right? So this was just my little demonstration board for those different colors. Now the way that we mix these colors will be very handy because that will be the way that you can also get those same colors when we're going to do the coffee mug. So if you're uh, like me and you're choosing a teal background, right? A teal background and maybe I'm going to do an orange one. Actually, maybe this time I might do a yellow mug. Maybe I'll really change it up and get, get something completely different. That'll be kind of neat. Um, but it'll be the same way that we blended those colors. All right, so we have our background color in, right? So I chose to go back with my favorite color, which is the teal. But maybe you did red, maybe you did yellow, maybe you did a purple or a green. Whichever way that you did it, it's perfect. Um, I did all the edges, so it's all nice. And now it is dry. It's dry to the touch. Um, that paint is from before, so don't worry. And now we're going to pull out our chalk. So what, what the chalk is going to help us do is we're going to chalk in the shape of our coffee mug, right? And it actually is a pretty simple shape. Ready? So here we go. So my mug down here, it, I mean, it's still fine. I like more this shape a little better. So I'm going to look at that one as my demonstration. So the first thing we're going to do is an oval. An oval that actually is going to hang off of the edge of our cup. So it's even not even a full oval. So you'll see, we'll start at one point, go around, and then kind of come off the edge of our canvas. So I'm going to kind of come down here. It's about about the halfway point right here. And that's where I'm going to start. I'm going to start a little line and it's going to curve, it's going to curve up and around. It's going to curve back around. And then it's going to not meet, but it's going to come off, it's going to kind of come off of the edge. And again, I'm doing this sideways, so sometimes mine might look a little funny from when I was able to do it straight on, but that's kind of kind of our shape. I can, I, with chalk, the great thing is that if I did it wrong or I don't like it, watch, I can take a rag, I can rub it and just erase that. That is the, the beauty that we have with, here we go, I like that better. All right, so. That is the shape of the top of the mug, all right? 
the side of the mug. Now we're not even going to worry about this side. We're saying that we're not, we're so close that um, we are going to, we are going to not see this edge of the mug. We're going to just see this edge. So this part, we're going to come to the kind of the farthest edge of the oval. And then we're just going to do a little curve down. Actually, it kind of is a little more straight and then it curves at the end. See, again, it's chalk. We can just wipe it off. All right, so I'm kind of, I'm making more of a rounded, rounded mug. The other thing is that our chalk is just our guide. As we're painting, if we can tell that we would like a little more paint in a certain area, you can always just go over where the line is drawn. This is again, just giving us our guide. So that's our mug shape so far. And then the last thing is I'm going to do the handle. So the handle is I'm going to start about the mid of the mug, right? I'm going to go <coughs> up around, I'm going to curve it and come back down. It seems really big because this is the outside edge. That's the very outside edge of the mug handle. And then I'm going to go back inside and I'm going to draw another curved line and that's the inside part of the mug. You see that? So my lines, and so again, if you want it, your handle a little more rounded, you can kind of mess, you can mess a little bit, you can keep messing. But again, it's just chalk. We cannot mess up this part. We can go, eh, I don't like this. I want to try that again. I want it a little rounder. No problem, right? So you get to where you like the shape, right? Maybe. Maybe it went out too far, right? And you want to kind of, kind of bring it down a little more. That's fine. Maybe it curves more, right? I'm going to just stick with that for, for right now. All right. So that is, that is the guide for our, for our coffee mug. Yeah, I'm gonna keep messing with it and <laughs> I need to stop. Okay, but see, I've got multiple lines. That doesn't bother me. I know that I can, I can paint over certain areas. So the next stage that everyone actually is gonna do, no matter what color your background, is you're gonna get white, just plain white. And we're gonna do color in with just plain white. So I like using my medium flat brush for right here. One of the things I like about a medium flat brush is that when I turn it to the side, it becomes a nice straight edge. When I turn it to its flat edge, it becomes really wide for painting in. So I can go, I can use the very nice flat straight edge to go around curves, right? And follow the line. And then when I want to fill in, I can use its widest point to fill in. So that's what I really like about this brush and why I'm choosing that. I'm gonna dip it in my water, get it primed and ready. And so I'm going to start using just plain white. And I'm going to follow the line that I did in chalk. And I'm going to start filling in all of this with white. Now, you probably are going to go, well, how am I going to know where that line is? That is actually very, very good to know. I'm going to do this as an oval first, so I kind of see that shape, right? I kind of, kind of see that oval, that oval shape. There we go. And just start filling in with all the white. What this is giving us the ability to do is later come in with any other color that we choose, right? Any other color that I choose now, I can put over this white. So if I'm wanting to do, especially a yellow color, which is the, the one I've chosen to do, 
A yellow could not go over this very dark color at all. There's no way. It is too transparent. It is too light. So giving it this nice white base. Now you could also go, well, why do we do all that painting on the background? Why do we, why do we put in that color? Well, you know what? It's actually a lot easier. Acrylic paint likes to layer. It doesn't mind going over. You can also see I'm trying to be very careful to, to remember where that edge of my cup was right there. See, that was the edge. And so I'm even, even letting there be almost like a little bit showing almost, not really, but trying, trying to remember where did I draw that edge versus where's the whole body of the cup. If you really want to, a fun thing to do since we're making our coffee cup kind of go off the edge of our canvas, right here, right here if you want to, I'm going to follow the white just to where that cup is wrapping around. Do you see that? That's kind of a fun thing to make it look like your cup is still there. So I'm going to just to where the cup, the cup would be. You see that? So that's kind of fun. Now on the handle, we're gonna keep the center of the handle the same color as the background. So we're just gonna fill in the handle part, right? So we can't, we do wanna be a little more careful. I'm gonna use the flat edge and go all the way around and back down. So that's the outside edge. Then I'm gonna follow my chalk line around and down for the inside edge. And then I'm just gonna fill in the handle part right there. Just like that. Now it's okay if you still see a little bit of streaks of your color through, it's okay. We are going to, our next coat of color, we'll be able to go over top of some of that. So it's not a complete, complete solid white, but it definitely has covered up that base background color, right? And I can still, you can still see, I have that oval shape right there. There's the mug shape right there, and then there's my handle. Right there. And like I said, this is the great step that all of us can do, no matter what color we chose for our background or what color that we're choosing for our mug. So that's one of the reasons I really liked doing that because I knew that it would give you the option. Are you painting the white on the bottom too? Yes, all the way. Like on the bottom of the mug, on the oh. egg. Oh yeah, um, yeah, you could. I think I'd forgotten, but that would be, that would be another fun wrap around is you could wrap the color on the bottom of, of that. So it would probably just go to where the mug is again, right there, and you could do white right there. Okay. Yep, that's a great idea. So it's okay if the cup looks splotchy? Yeah, the cup, the cup may look a little splotchy. We'll, we'll be going back in with a number of layers of our cup color to be able to color, cover that up. So that's okay. This is just giving us that base that we need. Okay. We also don't want to do too much right now because then this is another thing that we're going to be having to wait to dry before we add the next layer. So doing a nice solid even layer, um, but not two or three of them that we'll have to sit around and wait to dry. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're ready to move on to the next part. Um, I've let my white 
kind of dry. And this is again where you get to choose what color you want the coffee mug. So I did three different color examples over here. But again, if there's something that you have that you like, I really <laughs> need a purple mug or a pink one because I just have this color I've never used before, then go for it. It's going to be the same, again, the same kind of ideas for each one. Um, I am choosing to do a yellow kind of orange mug for myself this time because I actually don't have that combination over here. So to me, it's still a new painting. So I am going to still utilize my flat brush. That's gonna let me kind of come across and really fill in this color. So for me, I am, like I said, I'm gonna do this yellow orange. So I am going to, I've got some fresh yellow for me. Now, if you're doing the blue, like, if you're doing a blue teal color, I want you to go ahead and you'll grab that blue and a little bit of yellow and you'll start mixing this. We're gonna do a darker color first. So it's kind of our darker base color of whatever it is. And then the lighter colors that you see are when we go back in and we lighten up whatever color that you've chosen. So if you're doing a red, it's gonna be a red, maybe mixed in with a little bit of blue to get it a darker color. For my yellow, I'm going to grab yellow and I'm also gonna come down here where my red is hiding, right? And I'm gonna grab a little red and get that all on my brush. And here's what we're gonna do. Now we saw, remember we did our oval, we filled in the oval and then we kind of can still see almost a line, right? Of that line where the coffee cup part is and not the opening. So I'm gonna use my brush and I'm gonna follow that line. So I'm going to just come around so if I'm using orange, you want me to make the orange darker or I can just use it straight up? If you've already got a, a pre-mixed orange, you can use that. I'm using all my primary colors, so I have to mix okay. any extras that I, I use. Okay. So I'm painting under that oval. Under that oval line is where I'm coming around right now. So I'm, I'm gonna- I'm going off the side. Yep. And you can, yeah, you can go on the, the edge that we did the white. So I'm gonna go ahead and come around the whole, the whole way and fill in with the color that I chose for this mug, right? Maybe I'm getting a little, oh, I've got a little extra red. I'm gonna put that more in this corner over here. That's fine. Kind of went for more of an orange, orange color because I grabbed a lot of red and that's okay. So we're covering up the white on the side and the bottom. Yes, yeah, whatever part, wherever the, wherever the cup is then we're going to go ahead and cover that up. And also we're gonna do the handle. So we can't leave out the handle. We're just gonna color that also the same color of whatever the mug is. So this one's just covering up the white that you put in. And like I said, especially this yellow color, yellow would no way could you see that over the teal? No way. But, but, because we put that layer of white down, we can paint that right over top. And it looks like it was there the whole time. Now I'm still seeing some chalk lines, which are fine. I'm not gonna worry about that right now. I am gonna just make sure that I'm filling in on all the white. But if it's chalk, once my painting is dry, I will be able to use just a damp cloth to rub that right off. So do not worry about that. That's not worth going, oh no, I didn't quite go over the chalk line. That's fine. Chalk line, it will disappear. It does not matter right now. So. 
fill that in right there. I think I didn't quite have enough orange for my handle. It went, went a little bit lighter on the yellow for me. So I'm going to go back over it. You can always do that. If you go, oh man, I kind of lost my color. You can always go back. But I'm going to, I'm going to let that rest right now. We're going to come back with some highlights on this, but we're going to let that dry. I'm gonna let that dry. So if you see, I've got, I, I went up underneath that oval shape. We, we did the oval, right? Went up underneath that with the color, um, kind of bringing in some darker of the color, that blend that I was doing. So again, if you were doing a red, if you did that red, I would probably grab just a little tiny touch of blue to make that darker in one area, right? This, this corner over here like I did on that one. Or if you were doing um, the teal blue, right? If you're wanting to, to make it lighter, right? We add some white to it, but if you want to have it at its darkest, you probably don't have to add anything to it. It's a very dark color. So you'd probably have it darker right there. I'm having more fun with this one being more of an orangey, Whoop, maybe a little too much. Again, this is where you can always, you can always blend and fix it how you want. All right, I'm going to, I'm going to stop that right now because as I keep going, I'll just keep playing. <laughs> All right, after we get the base part of our color in, we're going to move on. We're going to let that part dry. So sometimes we jump back and forth between sections of our painting to let another area dry while we get something else done, right? So this part now should be dry because we haven't done anything to it, right? So the next thing we're actually going to do, and I did it two different ways, and I think, I think we'll go ahead and we're going to do our um, we're going to do our brown our brown for our coffee or cocoa or whichever kind of drink you're putting in here um, we're going to go ahead and do that brown is kind of the the standard color for uh, coffee or different drinks that are within a mug so to make that color see for me for me I still just have my red, yellow, and blue. And when making brown, we know that actually all we have to do is mix those three colors together to make brown. We can also be adding in some white to get the lighter colors, okay? So I'm gonna start, here we go. I am still gonna use my medium flat brush. I kind of like that from being able to mix and then that will still give me a straight edge for putting in the color. So I'm going to grab some red. Normally I end up needing a lot more red. I'm going to grab just a little bit of blue. Blue, blue, blue is very strong. Don't need too much blue. And then I will grab some yellow. I'm going to come in here in the middle between all three of them and I'm going to start to mix. Now if I start seeing it looking too much like a green color, that means that blue got really strong, right? If you see, actually, it almost looks like black to you guys, and that's fine. I'm gonna come over here and grab a little bit of white and try to blend. I'm gonna start to start seeing it. Now, when I start adding white to it, it does start to gray it out. This is where I know I actually need to grab a little more red to get it more back in a warm brown color instead of that gray. So I'm going to mix, kind of scoop, kind of twirl my brush to get the extra off. 
And I'm gonna start seeing if I can get this warm kind of a chocolatey cocoa color. Almost looks a little bit, a little purple. Maybe I add a little yellow. There we go. Yeah, that's starting to look like a warm, warm cocoa color. So this, this is worth taking a little bit of time to get the color that you want. You want to make sure that you're doing it with enough paint so that I can almost kind of scrape, twirl it off and look, I've got a little plop of paint right there that I can pull from. So this, this does take some practice. If you're seeing it's turning, like I said, too green, add some red to it. If it's starting to look a little too purple, add some yellow to it, okay? You probably are not gonna have to go and reach for a lot more blue, blue being our really strong color. And also if we're wanting to get it lighter, we can add a little bit, a little bit of white, a little bit of white to get that, that warm cocoa color. All right, I think I am happy with that warm cocoa color right now. I'm gonna come to my painting. I want to show you on the example, we are gonna go back around and do a white edge around our, our coffee mug. So my goal is really not to go all the way around to the very edge of this. I almost want to just kind of leave a little circle um, left that I'll come back over with my white. So it's not about filling it in all the way. Now, if you do, that's okay. White will be able to go back over the brown, but it is very handy to just go ahead and leave some of that exposed. So I'm going to come around with my, my brush. And see, I'm kind of leaving, kind of leaving a white, that white edge that we're gonna come back in later. You see that? So this is just white that's left over. I'm not painting it all the way out. That's just white that we already painted. I'm just not letting the paint touch that right now. And I'm coming in and I'm gonna fill in all the way with that brown, that chocolatey brown that I mixed. Chocolate brown, coffee brown. I like cocoa myself. I'm not a coffee drinker, so I probably will refer to this more as cocoa than coffee, but it is still in that same warm family. We're having cold days and we need warm, warm drinks to keep us warm. Now, this is where we let our, um, our edge go over, right? And and so my my drink is going to also go over the edge right there because it's we're so close up on the coffee mug, right? That we don't even see that edge of the rim. So right now it's just it's just a solid it's just a solid color. Just a solid color. We are gonna go back in in just a little bit to add in some of our swirls, but we will do that after this area dries. So that's will be the part where we're bouncing, we're bouncing back and forth. You can already see it kind of looks very much like our examples a little more now because I can see that white, that white rim, basically I'm telling the story of that. We'll go ahead and rinse out this brush really, 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 really well, especially with that brown. It's a very strong color once we put all those colors in there and I mixed the colors. So it's going to be even stronger. All right, so we've got our base brown um, for our drink. Like I said, it's either coffee or hot cocoa. Um, I also was noticing personally for me, my, uh, my mug <laughs> was going a little wonky. So I went ahead and brought my brown down a little bit and I'm gonna be able to fix 
what, what I felt was a little misproportion, but it's okay. This is not a perfectly proportioned cup of coffee, but maybe it's just the tastiest one. That's all that matters, right? So the next thing we're gonna do, this bottom half of our mug, the colored part, is now dry. While we're letting the brown dry, we're gonna move on to adding some highlights and some shadows. So we've got some darker areas of our color, um, but we haven't added any lighter parts. So you need to look at what color you did, right? So my examples over here, I've got red and I've got that teal and I'm demonstrating the yellow. The main thing that you're gonna need to do is we're gonna do a lighter version of whatever color you chose for your mug. And that's going to do a highlight on the top of our handle. And then we're gonna say that the light is kind of hitting it right here. And so it's kind of making a little shine, a little lighter part. So we know that that's actually not a light red. It's just saying that the mug is shiny, right? And sometimes shiny will read as a lighter color for us. So I, for me and my color, I am going to come, I'm gonna still use this flat brush. I'm gonna to come to my yellow, right? I'm gonna to come to my yellow. I'm gonna maybe grab a little white with my yellow, my little, my yellow and make it lighter, okay? So again, if you were doing that red, you would take red with a little bit of white. If you're doing that teal, mix that teal, add a little bit of white. And I'm gonna come right here and I'm going to do just some straight across, kind of like some curved streaks of, of this lighter, this lighter color. Now it's gonna seem really light. That is okay. We're gonna keep it concentrated in this area right here, right? If you feel like it got a little too light and you wanna blend in, some of your other color on the edge, but we're gonna make it to where it's really, really light in that area. And see how now suddenly it looks like it's, it had a shine to it. it, almost looks white. So I'm gonna grab that same thing. I've got white for me, I've got white and yellow, and I'm going to, that light is gonna hit the top of my handle as well. So I'm going to do a little streak of white on the top of my handle, right there, just right there. Not going much farther. A highlight really should just be at a, at a small little area. Just like that. So, and, and this is almost a, uh, not quite a full triangle, but it, it gets, it's wider right here at the rim and it gets a little bit narrower right like that. You see? So that's how that highlight is there. Now, I, I forgot more of a shadow, darker part on the lower part of my handle. So I'm going to, well, I still have some yellow on my brush, I still have that. For me, I'm gonna come and grab a little of my red and make that, that deeper color that I had over here. And I'm gonna make sure that this part is a little bit, a little bit darker. That's gonna give some dimension to my, to my handle. And then maybe a little bit on that edge right there, right? So again, if you're doing the red color, I would, I would be adding a little bit of white to your red, making a lighter red for your highlight. And then maybe adding a little blue if you wanna make sure that this is a deeper, deeper red, right? So you can see right there that, that now this is lighter and that bottom part of the handle is darker because we're saying that this is, this is not getting as much light, right? That we're telling that story of light. That part, that part of the handle is not getting as much light as that part, which is the top part. 
the blue, you'll do the same thing. You may end up just using the straight dark blue and just having to add some white to that highlight part. Yeah, looking really good. Oh, we're getting so close, I'm so excited. It's looking, looking really good. There's just a couple little extra details that we can add. Now, if you wanted to stop right here, you could, or maybe just um, stay long enough to do some of the um, swirls. Um, but I'm really, I'm really liking the way that my cup is turning out. And now I'm actually going to switch brushes. I'm not going to do my flat brush anymore. I'm going to switch to a round brush. So this is a round medium brush, and this is how I'm going to get the rim of my coffee mug in, and then we're going to go in and start adding some of the swirls. I'll show you how we do coffee, coffee cup swirls, which gave me a little trouble, but I worked it out, and I will be able to help you, I promise, I promise. If you end up wanting to do just a little bit and you go, I don't like this and you cover it all over, it's fine. I don't want you to get frustrated. So this, I am going to do just straight white and I'm going to cover up that white edge that we left. I'm just gonna follow that with my round brush all the way around and just basically give it a second coat of white that really makes it really makes it pop and stand out. So you probably noticed when we did that first layer of white, you might see some of your background color coming through. This is the chance that we have now to go back over this, right? To go back over it and to cover that up. Also, if you wanna make some adjustments, like I said, for me, I, I didn't do a very good job with the shape. So I'm going to, Pretend now, I'm gonna follow around the edge of my brown, look at that. And I'm gonna say, well, this is the new edge of my coffee mug. You see, I just fixed that. I just put that edge in, or maybe you don't like the way the shape of your brown went and you can go, oh, I can just fix a little bit of that with my white. I can fix that right there and I didn't mess up at all. Because this is not about it being perfect. This is about us creating something, we're breathing, we're enjoying this, we're just putting colors on a canvas. Like that's all that this is. And it ends up looking like something at the end, which is even more fun. That's great. But really, so I just followed all the way around like I said, I just continued my white right there to get the edge of my coffee mug. And it looks really cool because this is where we're saying this is like a, one of the pottery mugs where the outside is colored, but this is the edge, which is the pottery that wasn't colored during the process of firing. I don't know. There's always fun to have a story to go along with whatever you're painting. All right, so there's that. And then the inside of my, oh, looks like my, looks like my coffee. <laughs> no, my, my brown has dried and we're gonna go back in and do some swirls. So I have a little bit of my brown left over that I mixed right? What I need now is a lighter version of that same brown. So I am going to, I'm going to use my brown brush. I'm going to bring some white over to this, swirl it around, see if I can get it a little bit lighter. If it starts again, if it starts to gray out, when I say gray out, it starts to look kind of Honestly, it looks a little sad. Although it being a little creamy like that is fine because maybe we're saying these swirls are cream that you just mixed into your coffee, right? So that is, that's kind of, kind of working. Maybe I'll add a little bit of yellow to mix it. I don't know. There, yeah, that'll kind of work. So when you mix colors on your brush, sometimes the color will start to creep up up your your bristles 
what I do is I push my uh, bristles down on the plate and I kind of roll and get any extra paint off and then I come back and get the paint just on the tip of my brush because that's the most important part. I don't need paint going all the way up my bristles. That's not where I paint. I only paint with the edge. So here is the little secret that I figured out for these swirls. Ready? Here we go. So I'm going to find the center, right? The center of where I'm going to say this, that my coffee is swirling. All right, I'm going to get you close so I can show you. Think ovals, not circles. So everyone think ovals, think ovals, think ovals. All of this is flat. Everything is very flat ovals. We're going to have a lot more curves on the edge, but everything in the center is going to be a lot closer. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a little tiny, little tiny oval in the center. A little oval, little tiny oval. Do you see that little oval? Look at that. There's a little tiny oval in the center and that's going to be my center point that everything is going to come out of. Okay. So now I'm going to keep everything, like I said, for this, this distance, everything is closer, and as it goes out, it's gonna curve more. Let me show you. So I'm gonna do the next one is gonna curve out like that. I'm gonna curve out and around. So you see how there's more, there's more distance going sideways than there is going up and down. These are really close. These have got a little more space. So now I'm going to do another one. This is going to curve out around this way. I might need to grab some more paint, right? And then I'm going to curve around. And it's going to go around. We're starting to see the swirls coming. You see that? So again, the trick is the fact that my swirl, I see more space going out from the side and I see less space here because it's following the shape of our coffee mug. So I'm going to do another, another layer and some of them can be thicker, right? This is where maybe the coffee cream got really nice and thick. That'll work. If you want thinner lines, you go gentle, or if you even want to switch to a uh, skinnier brush, that is always fine. But as you see, I'm going to start just building another ring, another ring going out all the way to get this. Again, they're really, really close when they're, when they're on top of each other, and then they, sw then they swoop really far out on the edge. You see that? So this is going to go out and it's going to swoop and really have a lot more space. There's more space between those lines over there. But when I come back down, it gets really close to these other lines. And that starts giving that oval round shape. You see that? Here we go. It's not the easiest. I promise it does take some practice. If you see it, if you go, I really don't like the way it's turning out at all, you can always go right back over with some of your base brown and what, almost like erase it. Just go right back over it, erase it, and try again. Or maybe you decide you want to just do a few little swirls. Maybe you don't want to do as many as I'm doing. Maybe you want to do just like two little ones in the center. That's fine. So I am just showing all the different, all the different ways. And now I'm going to do a really big one, really wide and a little thicker because this is, I've got apparently a lot of creamer in this part.
There we go. There we go. So like I said, I've kind of kind of been pulling from that same brown. I may have to mix some more, mix some more brown. Sometimes I start using, using it up. All right. And you can come back in if you want to with, with maybe another little, little bit of brown. Do another little layer in between on some of the spots. So I can I can do that too with maybe maybe that brown. Yeah, there we go. Wait, is there any more brown to the? Um, there were some spots for mine that I was uh, not ha as happy with. You can, you can, uh, I had to mix some more brown so it wasn't quite matching. So I'm willing to go in, even though it's not the exact same brown that I did, <laughs> and, and kind of layer that in. Sometimes it's hard to match and mix the exact same brown. So I'm, I'm just being willing to go back in and maybe blend in a little bit of a, another shade of brown if I wanted to, but really that's, it's looking good. I'm enjoying that. Like I said, this, the main secret is how the oval is kind of maintained. There's more of that oval shape, right? To follow the oval of our mug. And then there's only one last thing to do. One last thing to do. The last thing that we are going to do, we'll end up having us use our chalk one more time. And that is just because I felt like that's a much easier way to do that. Also, if you wanted to, you could use your chalk to practice. If you wanted to chalk out your, your um, swirl lines right there in the mug, and then see how you like it and then go back in. You can do that. But the last thing we're gonna do with the chalk is we're gonna do four little swirls. If you don't wanna do the steam swirls, you can stop right here. That's perfectly fine. I liked both of them, honestly. When I first did this painting, I stopped and I said, oh, I think I'm done. And then I saw, the, thought about the steam lines and I was like, oh no, I gotta go back and add. So using my chalk, I'm going to, my end of each steam, I'm going to try to aim for the center uh, of my swirl, my center swirl. But I'm going to start here. I'm going to curve around, swirl it, and come down. Right? Maybe this one, I'll start the other way. I'll curve this way, curve it, and come down. See here, I'll do this one. And then one more. One more little swirl. With that being in our chalk lines, it's really helpful. Again, if you don't like where one ended up, you can say, oh, I want to fix that. I want to move that. Chalk line gives you a lot of freedom. The last thing then all you have to do is this is where I grabbed my teeny tiny brush because I did want to try to make sure it stayed nice and skinny, right? Went in, got that wet. It, I also watered down for me, if you have a very, very watery white, that works. But for me, I went in and I added some extra water and I really, really watered down my white. I want it to be thinner because I want it to be almost where I can see through it at some points because it's steam, right? So I went through and I got it to where it's really kind of watery. It's really very watery. See, if I were to paint with that, 
it wouldn't cover up as much, but I don't want it to because I almost want it to stay that nice see-through like the chalk is made. So I'm gonna come back in with my brush and follow the chalk lines. Now, don't worry, you're gonna have to grab paint part of the way through because chalk dries out your brush a little bit. So it's okay. And it's okay that you don't cover all of the chalk as well. That is something that you can go back. This is our very last thing. Watch, we're gonna finish this up right here, right now with these cute little steam swirl lines. As I go back, you see me going back for extra, extra paint. Like I said, that chalk, chalk tries to uh, dry up my brush. It's the only downside to the chalk, but it also is actually helping me keep it kind of a lighter, thin color or coat, right? Oh, last one, last one, come on. Come on, little swirl, we can do it. We can do it. Yay, there we go, there we go. And like I said before, those chalk lines are very easy to get up later on. This part of my painting that's dry, I can just go right in and make those disappear. I'm gonna wait for my chalk line on my swirls I just did because those will probably try to streak, but congratulations, you just made a coffee mug. And I'm so excited to think about what combination that you decided to use for your colors. Did you do the red and yellow? Did you do a red mug and a uh, and a yellow background. Did you do a teal mug? I just can't wait to see it. And I hope that you really enjoyed this. And maybe if you want to, you could do a full, full tri set and hang them all together. I think that's what I'm gonna do with all of these painting versions. Maybe I'll just have to do a whole block of them. I don't know. So I hope you had a great time. I'll see you next time.